I'm going to show you how to use the Grid Array tool so we can quickly and easily create a large array of repeating shapes and patterns. In each of these three examples, we're going to be using the Grid Array tool in a slightly different way. First, I'm just going to turn off the images and then we're going to start with going to the Shape panel, open up Basic Shapes and select a heart. From here, I'm going to choose 100 millimeters for the width and then align it to the center. Now, I'm just going to turn the eyeball off in the layers list. And then we're going to choose circle and create a circle by holding shift and then resizing it to two millimeters. We just zoom in. Now, if we select that circle, and open up the applications panel, we can go to grid array. Here, all of a sudden, it starts to space out by one millimeters on the X and one millimeters on the Y with two columns. So if we just increase the X direction to five millimeters and the Y direction to five millimeters, they are now five millimeters apart. And then we can increase the X columns to 10, which is the maximum, and the Y columns to 10, which is the maximum. And click done. Now we have a grouped array of small circles, but this isn't enough. We need more. So with those selected, we need to go back to grid array, select it, and then we can just choose five again on the X, five again on the Y and leave the columns at two and two because we just need that many and click done. Now we have a larger group of circles. We just need to go to align center, which drops it into the center of the artboard. So if we open up the layer list, we can then turn on the heart close the layer list. I'm just going to zoom in. And for now, we just need to ungroup all the circles. And I'm just going to go around and delete all the ones that are outside of the heart. So I'll probably just speed this up so you don't have to watch me doing it all. Okay, so I'm just going to also delete these four from the center. Oh, I'm just going to keep that one. And then I'm going to align that one horizontally and then scale that one up to about four millimeters. And again, horizontally. If we just use the arrow keys and move that up. And then once we have that, we can select everything and go to make compound. So then if we put it onto the engrave layer, you can see we have a full compound path of the heart with all the holes cut out. For example two, I'm going to open up the shapes panel, basic shapes, and I'm going to choose this rounded rectangle. Then I'm going to place it in the center and choose 100 again. And again in the center. So open up the shapes and turn the eyeball off. Then we need the circle and draw out a circle. And again, this time two millimeters, zoom in. And we're gonna do a similar thing, which is five millimeters spacing on the X and Y and the maximum of 10 copies. Once we have that, we need to go again to the grid array tool and change the spacing to five on the X and Y and leave the columns at and rows at two. So with that selected, we can now align it to the center. And if we go back to the layers list, we can turn on the rectangle, close the layers list. And I'm just gonna grab these 
uh, circles and then rotate them. If we hold shift, we can snap 45 degrees. Then I'm going to ungroup. And again, I'm just going to go around and select everything that's outside of the rectangle. Okay, so that leaves us with a diamond pattern. Then, as we are going to use this as a freestanding sign, we want a nice square edge on this bottom edge. So with the rectangle selected, we can choose Edit, and we can select this, this node here, select this node here, and Shift-click on this one, and press Delete. Then with the rest of the four, we just shift click on them and go up to the alignment and choose aligned bottom and then delete the inside ones. And then we can shift click and we want to choose this sharp corner. Ooh. Sharp corner. So that leaves us with a nice sharp corner. Okay, so then we can make a compound path. So we know everything's looking correct. Now, I want to add some tabs on this bottom edge. So it will sit in a base plate. But it's really awkward to do, to align everything in the centre of the artboard sometimes. So... I'm just going to move this up here and we're going to put it so it's exactly in this top left hand box. So I'm going to choose zero on X and zero on Y. So this point here is zero, zero. And if we zoom in, I'm now going to choose a rectangle and create a rectangle. And we want that to be 10 millimeters 10 millimeters wide and three millimeters for three millimeter material we will be using. Oops, if I unlink that, we can then choose 10 millimeters. So it's 10 by three. And the reason I put this up here is so it's nice and easy to align this because the snapping in X tube is just not very good. And we know this point here is zero on the X and 100 on the Y. And as X tool works off this top left hand corner, we can choose zero on the X and 100 on the Y, which puts it exactly where we need it. Now, I'm going to select that rectangle and go to the grid array options. We just want one Y row and no spacing on the X, but 10 columns. So if we click done, now we can ungroup those. I'm going to delete the outside ones, then count in two and delete, count in two and delete. And there we will have the placement for the tabs. So now I'm just going to copy and paste these. And I'm going to actually group them and then align center just for now going back to this one we can select all of these i'm just going to drag them up just so they intersect with the rectangle the larger frame and then shift click on the frame and we can choose unite that then joins everything up so we have some tabs along the bottom. So now I'm just going to choose the shapes, basic shapes, and open up. And I'm going to choose this rounded rectangle again. And then we can align that to the center. Now we want this to be a hundred millimeters wide. If we just align that to the center again, but it's obviously way too big this way. So 
you can try and scale this, but obviously with the size linked, it will scale in every direction. And if we unlink it, when we scale, we start to lose the rounded corner. So what we need to do is go to edit, and I'm just gonna use the arrow keys and move these down. And then I'm going to use the arrow keys and move these up just until we get a nice shape. What we don't want to do is overlap these two nodes, otherwise you'll get some strange shapes. But once we have a shape like that, we can click done. And then we can align that in the center. I'm going to select all of these rect smaller rectangles and choose Unite, which joins them all up. And then we can make a compound path. If we drop that onto the engrave process, you can now see that we've got a nice base plate that this sign will slot into. For the third example, we're gonna create the diamond pattern that you can use as a decorative background for signs and shapes. So if we choose a rectangle, we want to create that at 72 millimeters wide. I'm gonna unlink and choose three millimeters high. Then we want to place this at zero, zero to make life easier. And I'm going to copy and paste that and using shift, we can rotate 90 degrees. And again, place this, to, this at zero, zero. Now I'm going to choose the, just the horizontal rectangle and go to the grid array. And we want none in the X, but nine in the Y, each spaced by five millimeters. Then we want to choose the vertical rectangle and again go to the grid array and we want none in the y but we want nine in the x each spaced by five millimeters again now the reason we haven't got 10 and filled this as a a solid square is because this isn't large enough and to get this to repeat more than once we need this side open so if we select everything and go to the grid array, we can then choose a spacing of zero on both the X and Y and leave the columns at two. If we click done, we now see that we have a perfect pattern. And if we were to align that to the center, we can then rotate holding shift to snap to 45 degrees and if you look, everything is still as rectangles. So if we were now to select it and go to Unite, that joins everything up as it should be. If we go to the shape panel and choose a heart, we want to select that. We can make that 100 millimeters and place that in the center. Now I'm going to select the heart. I'm going to go to outline and choose negative five, which will create another heart inside. We can choose the heart and shift select the pattern and we want to choose subtract. Now, sometimes this doesn't work as in this. So if we just undo, all we need to do is select the pattern, right click and choose arrange bring to front. That basically just puts this pattern above everything else. So the inside heart and the outside heart, the grouped pattern is at the top of the list. So when we choose the heart and the pattern, we're going to subtract the heart from the pattern by choosing subtract. 
So we can now basically choose everything and choose make compound again and put on the engrave layer. But to quickly finish this off, I'm just going to zoom in, release the compound path, and we want to delete this center and choose a circle holding shift, say four millimeters, align it horizontally, move up, select everything and make compound path. Well, I hope this tutorial was helpful and I'll see you in the next video.